Hey everybody, it's David Sirota. So I'm sure you've heard about Mike Pence's tie-breaking vote this week to kill the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau's arbitration rule. Some background on that rule before we get to the story of what happened in the lead-up to Pence casting that vote. The rule basically says to financial firms, you can't force your customers to sign arbitration clauses in contracts, clauses that basically prevent customers from being able to join class action lawsuits against banks. The CFPB rule was designed to protect consumers' rights to, to be part of class action lawsuits. The rule was justified by the CFPB as a consumer protection measure, basically saying that financial firms need a deterrent to behaving badly and inappropriately and illegally. And one of those deterrents is the threat of class action lawsuits. Finance firms know that, and so in a lot of their contracts with customers, in that fine print, when you sign up for a credit card or a credit reporting kind of services, uh, some of these contracts include provisions saying you agree that if you have a problem with the company, you can only have that problem heard in front of a privately appointed arbitrator. You can't actually join a class action lawsuit. Okay, so Pence casts the tie-breaking vote in the Senate to kill the rule. Uh, the Congress has been using the Congressional Review Act to kill rules passed at the end of the Obama administration, and they've been moving to kill the CFPB rule. And so earlier this week, Pence, in a late-night vote, cast a tie-breaking vote to kill the rule. Now, what wasn't mentioned in much of the reporting, uh, but what we broke uh, at International Business Times, is the fact that Pence was directly lobbied on this specific issue by the major trade association representing consumer credit companies. Uh, all sorts of lenders, auto lenders, credit card companies and the like. They have a trade association that has been, according to federal documents, lobbying Pence and Pence's office on the arbitration issue. In fact, in a letter that the group sent to Pence's top economist. It says that they had meetings with Pence's staff and that Pence's staff actually requested uh, initiatives and policy proposals uh, to, quote, reform the CFPB. In other words, what this letter from this group has said is that Pence's office was soliciting effectively uh, ideas on how to dismantle or defang the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. That was back in March that that letter was sent. Uh, and the group, one of the things that it said that the federal government and Pence should do is to repeal or block the CFPB's arbitration rule. Uh, and, and again, they were this group, uh, the American Financial Services Association, was directly lobbying Pence, according to federal documents, on the arbitration issue. Pence has gotten a lot of money from the lending industry, uh, not surprisingly. Uh, when he was in Congress, he raised uh, more than a quarter million dollars from uh, donors in the lending industry. When he was running for governor, he raised about $260,000 uh, from donors connected to the lending industry. So his vote, his tie-breaking vote, wasn't necessarily a surprise. I mean, this is a guy who has been, who has forged deep ties to the lending industry, uh, and and he was he was expected to to vote to kill this rule. But it's important to see just how closely uh, he was working. He and his office were working with one of the key groups pushing to repeal this rule. You see it in those lobbying documents. You see it in that letter in which, in which the American Financial Services Association provides this detailed blueprint uh, about how to dismantle the CFPB, providing it straight to Pence, straight to Pence's top uh, economist. His top economist is a former economist at the Cato Foundation, the Libertarian Cato Foundation. So you see this web of overlapping relationships in the lead up to Pence casting that decisive late night vote. It's always important to follow these documents, to follow these relationships, and see how they work in practice. This is a very good example of where you have an industry with a vested interest in a policy outcome providing a detailed legislative blueprint to the very person who cast the deciding tie-breaking vote for a policy that that industry wanted.